Hello guys, so this week you're going to look into Next.js server actions. Funny thing is, server actions came out like 3 months ago and I just heard of them like 3 days ago when Next 14 was announced and everyone was complaining about them. It's really hard to catch up with the front end world. I don't know how you guys do it. So I'm going to share what I've learned and hopefully keep some of you out of the dark. So let's take a look at this form component here. So this is usually how we would do form submission in React. So we have our form with our input elements and then the values are being stored in this uh, form data state variable. So every time you change a form field, it updates our state here. And then when you submit the form, uh, so we call an API route and then send the submitted data. And then if everything is successful, uh, we set a success message. So this handle submit function here is uh, set on the form via the on submit handler. So and uh, this is the rendered form on the browser. So if we enter data, for example, so you enter the date, uh, phone number and click the submit button our on submit handler will be called and then once everything succeeds you get uh, this success message here so this form works properly by any standard so if we for example disable javascript and then we refresh the page and then let's try entering new data so we put the date then uh, we put the phone number so with javascript disabled if we submit the form nothing happens and uh, the page just refreshes but uh, the data is not sent to our api endpoint so one of the problems with uh, doing a form submission on the client is uh, it would work with JavaScript disabled. So that is where server actions come in. So server actions will allow you to run server only code inside the client. So you can do form submissions on the server without having to add event listeners, for example. So our task is going to change this form component to use server actions. So let's get rid of all these are uh, state managers and also the handle submit function. So let's remove the on submit handler too. Remove this code that's referencing state variables. So we can also get rid of all these change event handlers that are referencing uh, the state managers. So you just left with a bare form. So let's also remove this use client directive that marks this form as a client side only. Remove the use state import. So this is the form we are left with, just a bare form. So a server action is just a function. So for example, we want an action that uh, submits this form. So we can, for example, add an async function called uh, submit action. So this is our server action. So what marks this as a server action is adding use server at the beginning of the function declaration. So React will use this to determine if this action is going to be run on the server only. So to link this action to the form, we add an action prop to the form whose value is the submit action. So if you submit this form, this action action will be run and then the data will be sent to this action. So what we can do, we can console.log the data. So let's re-enable JavaScript in our console so that we can test this first. So let's also open our server console here so that we can see if any data will be logged here. So let's enter the name choose a date and a random phone number and then click submit so immediately you can see that on the terminal console here the data has been submitted because our log message is appearing here but the log message is not appearing on the browser so our function is being run on the server only so how are they able to do this so if uh, you look in the network tab you can see that a fetch api has been sent and if we inspect the payload so let me make this a little bigger and if we inspect the payload you can see that uh, the data that you have entered here has been sent via this fetch request. So it's almost the same method that we were using earlier, but now this method eliminated the use of our API routes. So we did not send any API request, but Next.js sends it for us in the background and reconciles the data for us, and then we are able to access it in this server action. And then one other thing I want to highlight is that, you remember I mentioned that our form initially could not run with JavaScript disabled. So let's try disabling JavaScript JavaScript and see if this runs. So control shift P disable JavaScript and then we can refresh the page with JavaScript disabled. So let's also open our console here to see if the data is submitted. So let's enter a name, another another random date and another random phone number and then submit the form. So you can see that that form submitted data. You can see the data logged into the console here all without running any JavaScript on the
the browser. So that's also another insane achievement. Imagine the JavaScript bundle size that you'll reduce by running most of your stuff in the server. So also these server actions doesn't have to be inside your component like this. You can declare it outside of the component. So for example, we can create a new file in uh, actions, say submit action.js. So let's move this submit action from here into our new file. And then because this action lives in its own file, we can move this use server declaration at the top of the file instead of inside the, the function. And then we can export the action and then inside our form we can import it so putting the actions in a separate files allows you to have multiple actions for example in one file instead of uh, declaring them in line so this moves us to the next step so if you have noticed we don't have the success message that we are displaying here so we want to be able to submit the form while the form is submitting maybe disable this submit button and after the form has submitted successfully we want to show the success message here so the there are two hooks that ship with the server components that will help us do that. So one of them that manages form state is called use form state. So let's declare a new variable here and then use the use form state hook. So use form state accepts two props. So one of the props is the action, which in our case is the submit action. And another prop is uh, the state. So for example, we want to show to store the success message. So let's call it the message. So this returns the state and then the action, which is uh, the function that will update this state. So instead of uh, using uh, the submit action here, we'll use the action that is returned by the use form state hook. So for example, to show the success message, we can just check if state.message is uh, there and then display the state.message value in a paragraph tag. So how do you update this value? So inside our submit action we can actually return the data that this submit action does so maybe after you update the database or you do something on the server you can return an object which say a message so we can say submission successful for example so this returned object will be the value of this form state and you can actually access this state inside your server action it's uh, the first argument of your action so it can be say the previous state. So you can log the data and also we can also log the state of the action. If you look at the browser, it looks like we have messed with something. So there's an error here saying you're importing a component that needs use form state. It only works in a client component, but none of its parents are marked with use client. So they are server components by default. So we can't use this hook in server components. So what we need to do is at the top of this file, mark this as a client component using the use client direct so that fixes the error message for us so let's try the submission process and see if everything works so let's enter the name the date of birth and the phone number and then click submit so you can see the message is updated and you see the success message here and the data is also sent to the server so another thing we need to do also is uh, disable this button when the form is submitting so that uh, if someone submits a form you have to wait for it to complete complete submission before you submit again to prevent spamming the submit function. So for that, there's another hook called use form status. So that hook returns an object. So use form status. So this hook returns an object with a pending value to show us if uh, the form submission is pending. So we can, for example, disable this button if the form submission is pending. So let's test this and uh, we can also disable JavaScript just to see if this is working with JavaScript disabled. Let's, let's refresh the page and then uh, we can enter new test data. So that uh, still a random phone number, then submit. Amazing. So you can see that uh, even with JavaScript disabled, the form is submitting and you're able to access the form submission state. So I don't know about you, but uh, all this is mind-blowing to me and there's a lot of things you can achieve with this it actually reminds me of php where you can do php and html and javascript all in the same file so the server and the client can all interact in the same file so that is all i have for you this week i hope you are now caught up with a new hot feature in next.js this probably won't last long and will be scrambling again in the next couple of months so thanks for watching and see you next time